Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. This time it's on the beautiful new Beasts of Chaos Beast Lord miniature that was very kindly sent to me by Games Workshop. So a huge thank you to them for sending that miniature out. Like I said, 2023, I'm trying to introduce as many extra Age of Sigmar videos into my channel as possible. And as such, you will be getting some more Slaves of Darkness, some more Glimpse by Gits and a few other videos in the coming weeks. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are heroes. You keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. And if anyone is interested in joining my Patreon, there are links to that below. Benefits for joining my Patreon include things like a private Discord server where you can hang out with me on a daily basis and chat about hobby with me and about 140 other people. So that's pretty cool. And also all Patreon members get access to an extra video a week. So that's an extra 52 videos a year. This week's video that will be up on Friday is on the beautiful new Ash Wastes Dune Scuttler miniature. So that's a crazy alien beastie. And I cannot wait to share that with my patrons. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this beast lord. I have long since had a special place in my heart for a beastman miniatures ever since the old world. And I'm so happy to finally have a plastic beast lord miniature. Built him, sprayed him black, got a gray sear overcoat with spray on top of him so he's ready for contrast. And then I got straight in with some dark old flesh contrast on all of the skin areas. So this video was intended to be another kind of a speed paint, but somewhere along the way, I got a little bit distracted and a little bit carried away. And I took this model a few steps past what I normally do. I did some extra highlighting on the skin, uh, some fur and stuff like that, just because I was really enjoying the process. I've always found models like Skaven and Beastman and stuff a lot more interesting to paint um, than some of the other sculpts out there. So I really just ran with it. Gargax Sewer is what I grabbed for the beginning of all of the fur. So obviously he's got some coming down from his little billy goat chin and then from the waist down he's all fur and then he has some in his, it's like basically coming out from his armpits and stuff like that. So just go around the model trying to find all the tufts of fur and bits uh, coming out from everywhere and get some sewer color on that. Be careful when you're going down with the sewer paint uh, down his legs and don't get his hooves. We want them to be a little bit brighter than that, so we don't want the dark, dark brown um, on them. After that, we're going to jump over to the Blood Angels Red Contrast and use that for all of the fabric. This is the color that they chose for the box art. I followed suit. You may have a different color depending on what kind of uh, great herd you want to run. If you have a specific color scheme in mind that you want, this is kind of where you would implement that. If you want to have them have their color and banners be yellow, be yellow, be blue, be blue, green, green, whatever, you know what I mean? This is where you would change uh, that. But uh, red uh, seems to uh, stick out quite nicely and work a treat with them. I've been painting a lot of red lately, so maybe I should try and change it up uh, a little bit soon. Agros Dunes was used to base coat in all of the horns, skulls, and the wraps for his two uh, axes, the leather wraps. I decided not to introduce another tone of brown into the model. And um, with the leather wraps, I just decided to go for the Agros Dunes and I think it worked a treat. And that is a worry I sometimes have with uh, models is you add too many different colors in and they kind of don't mix together all that well. Gorgon to Fur was used for all of the straps. So the straps holding on all of his armor panels uh, around his wrist, his big chest piece. Uh, it goes around the back. He's actually got a normal belt on. And just bits and pieces like that. Such a cool model. After that, we're going to jump over to Lead Belcher. And we're just going to base coat all of the metallics. So every single piece of our scrap armor that he has bolted to his uh, body, plus the two axe heads. We're going to get a nice coat of lead belts from them to give it a nice base coat. Like I said at the start, this is going to be a couple of steps further than normal. Um, for a normal Beastman model, whether that be a Gore, Ungor, Best Gore, it would be a slightly lower standard. And, and if this video gets a lot of attention, if people are enjoying it and want to see me do a standard Gore or Ungor, just let me know and I will come back and do it. Uh, Seraphim Sepia was then used uh, on across the entire miniature. This is going to darken down all of those metallics and any of those brighter colors. That's going to work as a perfect shade for all of the browns 
and all of the bone parts. Here it is with the shade dried and some texture paint on the base. It's time to get into the layering. So we're going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone and apply that to all the skin. As you can see, I'm, I'm going with the on top of all the muscles part. I know a lot of people out there do painting tools and they talk about trying to avoid the floating muscle syndrome, like each muscle is a separate island. I know that's not, you know, anatomically correct and it doesn't look the best, but I think it looks really cool. And what I do to soften it up is after I've applied my Cadian Flesh Tone um, paint to all of the skin, and all of those recesses are a little bit brown and the skin is a little bit bright and it's not matching um, all the best, is what I do is I like to water down um, a little bit of Rikon Flesh Shade. That's what I'm gonna do here. Not like hugely, it's not like loads of water, it's just like a wet brush from the, from the water pot into my shade. And then I apply that all over the skin again, between the kind of first and second highlight of skin. This just helps all the muscle kind of blend together again. It looks more natural. It looks a lot smoother and it helps with all that definition. So I love doing this and um, it works a treat. So that's the skin after the that coat. And then we're gonna go in with some Kislev flesh, some very subtle highlights on top of the muscle groups again. Like I said, this is kind of tops of muscles, knuckles, you know, top of your chest, that kind of areas. We're gonna go in very subtly with Kislev flesh and layer those parts up. And once that's done, you're left with a skin tone. I think looks really, really cool. And um, I definitely think it's to a really nice standard. I'm definitely proud of it as a character miniature in my army. And I think it's really easy and accessible for basically any paint level. After that, we're gonna move on to the fist on red and layer up all of those cloth parts. Like I said, if you're with a different color, You'll obviously pick a slightly different color to layer with. I don't think highlighting blue with red is going to work all that well, but more than welcome to give it a try. But just sticking to the raised parts of the fabric, leaving all the folds nice and dark. I did do two coats of this just to make it pop really well. And after that, we're going to get stuck into working on all of the bone. Just going to go for, once again, two-stage highlight. We're going to go for Zandri Dust first. If this was basic infantry or gore, I would go straight to Ushapi Bone and give it a very quick and easy highlight. But, like I said, because it's a character, I want to stand out a little bit. We're going to go for Zandri Dust first. And do a nice layer job on all of those bone parts. Leaving all the creases and shadows and shade bits where they are and the color that they are. Just getting that process of layering up started. After the uh, Zandri dust is done, that's when we're going to jump up to our U Shapti bone and layer all those pieces. But this is more like a kind of like an edge highlight, like the Kislev flesh was on the skin. It's just for the top parts, just for the the highest uh, points where it's going to get the most light from the sun or whatever light source there is. And of course, we're following this with all of the bone on the model, the horns, his teeth, the wraps on the axes, the skull on the base, all of those bits and pieces are gonna get that same coat. Then we're gonna jump up to Blood Reaver Flesh to layer up all of this, the fur on the model. I love using colors like this, which are supposed to be kind of uh, skin tones because they have like a bit of red to it, a bit of warmth, which I think like, a natural brown should have. We're not talking about something that's like wood. Although I know wood is a natural material. I mean something that's like living. So it's brown fur. And um, so I think something with a bit more uh, life to it is better. So that's where the Blood Reaver Flesh comes in as a really nice layer paint for the brown fur. And because his fur on his legs goes from like thick fur to tight fur, um, I think it's just easier having that warm tone in there. And from there, we're gonna go back onto Lead Belcher to layer up all the metallics on this uh, miniature. So like all the other parts we were layering, we are gonna go into the large flat areas and leave all the recesses nice and dark, keeping that sepia kind of browny tone, like this model kind of trudges through forests and jungles and all those kind of things. His armor is not gonna be completely pristine or clean. 
it is going to have dirt and grime all tucked up in all the recesses. And you can make this a lot grimier if you so wish. If you want a really dirty armor, you can go in there with some uh, watered down paint into the recesses. If you want to add like blood effects to the axes or spray it across his body, you can of course do that. It is totally up to you. I just wanted something a little bit cleaner for this miniature. Um, I added some nice tufts to the base and I called him finished and I'm absolutely delighted with the result. And there we have it guys, one Beast Lord ready to hit the tabletop. I think I took this a little bit past uh, speed paint and um, I was actually just enjoying myself so much that I was kind of adding a few extra layers and highlighting a little bit more than I normally would. Uh, Beastman are a personal favorite army of mine. It was kind of the last army I purchased in, in old Warhammer um, and ran. So uh, they will always have a little special place in my heart. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. If you're not already subscribed to my channel for some crazy reason, it would mean the world to me if you took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. And like I said, if you want to check out things like my Patreon, there's links to that below. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.